Uh, good afternoon, one and all. Uh, present here, uh, myself, Dr. John Lama, Assistant Professor, uh, the coordinator of, uh, this, of this webinar. I welcome you all to this national webinar on scientific and technological advancement in sports training. I am extremely thankful to our Honorable Vice Chancellor, uh, Professor K.R.S. Samba Siva Rao, for his support and motivation toward this program. With us, uh, we have our HOD, Professor S. H. Malswami, the convener of this program, uh, Department of Education, Mizoram University. Along with her, I'm extremely privileged to have our speaker of the day, uh, Professor uh, A.K. Uppal, sir. I think everybody know him. And sir, I welcome you to today's uh, national webinar. As well as I welcome all the dignitaries and particip uh, participants in the webinar. So to start our program, I would like to request our HOD ma'am to deliver the welcome address. Now I hand over to ma'am. Ma'am, please. Okay, thank you, uh, uh, John Lama. Uh, so good evening uh, to all of you. First of all, I'd like to welcome each and every one of you to our national webinar on scientific and technological advancement in sports training. Actually, this is the first uh, time our department is organizing this type of webinar or seminar that is related to the sports. Uh, sports bring discipline in life, actually, and uh, sports activate all the cells and keep the body active. Uh, and it also keeps the body fit and slim. So sports also improve the thinking ability and reduce the stress of the mind. The, uh, and it should be noted that training allows the body to gradually build up strength and endurance and build confidence. Training also allows athletes to gain more knowledge of their sports and enable them to learn about the importance of having a healthy mind and body. Therefore, our webinar today is going to be of great significance, especially for the sportsmen. So today, on behalf of the Department of Education, Mizoram University, I'd like to welcome our speaker, Professor Arun Kumar Upal, who is the ex-Vice Chancellor of GYG University, Gwalior, and Head Dean, Lakshmi Bai National Institute of Physical Education, Gwalior, the first physical education uh, University of India. Now, Professor A.K. Upal was a good sports person during his school and college days, and he has the distinction of training several athletes who have represented India in international competitions and won laurels for the country. He completed both undergraduate and postgraduate studies in physical education and received gold medals from Juwaji University. He was also the first person to, uh, to have obtained a PhD in physical education from Juwaji Jiwa, University. He is the only person in the country to hold two postdoctoral degree, that is DLIT and DSC uh, in physical education along with PhD. He completed diploma in track and field uh, coaching, uh, that is with distinct, uh, distinction from the world famous sports institute DHFK Leipzig, Germany. He has the distinction of helping the Bangladesh Institute of Sports, Dhaka, in establishing a department of sports sciences. He also assisted, assisted them in starting diploma courses in different disciplines of sports science, as well as in sports coaching. He was associated with national and combined university coaching, uh, coaching camps in track and field for several years. He accompanied the Indian University team for the World University Games held uh, in Edmonton, Edmund, Edmonton uh, that is in Canada and Sicily, Italy. He traveled widely and has attended several national and international conferences. He has written more than 400 research papers which have been published in national 
and international journals. He has authored 24 books on physical education and sports on various disciplines of sports and sports sciences. The Bhara Bharatiyam, that is mass gymnastic program sponsored by government of India and sports authority of India was the brainchild of Dr. Upal. He has the distinction of guiding 61 uh, candidates for their doctoral program, that is PhD. He has uh, he was a recipient of several awards, including two life achievement awards. He is dedicated to the course of physical education and sports in the country. So, sir, thank you for accepting our invitation to be the speaker of this webinar, and we welcome you again. Uh, so, let me take this opportunity to thank Dr. John Lama, the coordinator of this webinar. Uh, for without him, this webinar could not have materialized. So thank you, John. Also, let me thank and welcome Sean Lalsandami, Assistant Professor in the Department of Education, who is going to give the vote of thanks. Last but not the least, let me welcome all the participants of this webinar. Uh, without your participation, this webinar cannot be successfully organized. We hope and pray that you will be benefited by this webinar. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, madam. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am, for delivering the welcome address. Now moving towards uh, our technical session, uh, I would like to invite our honorable uh, yeah. speaker of the day. I have just, yeah, I just opened my, yeah. Ma'am, mm -hmm. ma'am, your voice are breaking actually when you own the camera actually. Yes, uh, so so moving towards our technical session. Uh, now, I would like to invite our honorable speaker of the day. Uh, namaste, sir. Uh, I heartily namaskar. welcome you, sir. Namaskar. So now I hand over, sir, uh, to you, sir. Please, sir. Like, let me post my PPT on the screen. Let me share my PPT, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Are you able to see my PPT? Is it visible? Uh, yes, sir. Am I audible to everyone? Yes, sir. Very good. Sir, uh, you can close this one, sir. This side. Uh, one option is there. The left side, sir. Left side. One close that. Yes. This is it yes. okay now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. The vice chancellor of the university, the coordinator, Dr. John, who has been in touch with me, with me for the last almost a month, practically speaking to me almost every day. I admire your uh, keenness, Dr. Lama. Being the organizer, you have made sure that the program takes off at the right time. Well, the time has come. All the participants of this webinar, well, I have chosen this topic, scientific and technological advancements in sports training. The factor which motivated me, it was the gold medal achievement of our javelin thrower in the Tokyo Olympic Games. I am talking about Chopra, who brought the second individual gold medal for the country in Tokyo Olympics. If you have been reading about Mr. Chopra, what enabled him to win gold medal in Tokyo Olympics? It is nothing but the science and technology. Chopra was being trained by a German coach who was a great biomechanics expert and if you have read about his achievement, he used a new technique called bow and arrow technique. You know, if you have seen archery, I am sure in Mizoram archery is popular, I presume so because it is from the eastern region. When you say, when you do archery, arrow leaves from the bow, 
so what his coach did made his body as the bow and javelin as the arrow and that experiment helped him to win a gold medal with that in mind i thought it will be interesting to share with you some technological advancements in sports training see we have large number of potential sports persons in our country a lot of talent sports persons in our country but the thing which we lack is we do not have the right kind of sports psychologists right kind of sports biomechanics experts right kind of sports physiologists right kind of kin anthropomists who can help our these potential sports persons to groom up as international level sports persons who can bring laurels to the country by winning more medals therefore if you look at what is technology a simple definition of technology it says it is a science or knowledge put into practice practical use to solve the problems as and when a problem has come in front of humanity humanity has taken help of science science has provided the solutions to them so that is what is technology science or knowledge put into practical use to solve the problems and then you look at this it says today belongs to science today belongs to science and all the advances in different disciplines have profound, profoundly influenced influenced our civilization if you try to find out a discipline which has received maximum benefit from technology probably everybody will say that it is the field of medicine which has received maximum benefit from technology today it is possible for our medicine experts except except one organ in the body that is the brain every other organ can be transplanted and i am sure when they start transplanting the brain of the individual they will not allow the human being to die they will be able to create human beings by transplanting different kinds of organs but if you really identify five different areas which have been greatly influenced by science greatly influenced by technology the field of games and sports will also will stand among the top 5 disciplines today you have synthetic playing surfaces barring two games that is cricket and tennis all other games have synthetic playing surfaces and when the synthetic playing surfaces were introduced the skills had to be modified our sports person had to develop better physical fitness and motor fitness because on a synthetic surface the ball moves faster the ball moves faster and i am sure in mizoram football is probably very popular if i am not wrong fifa has allowed a synthetic surface to be used in football also but so far maybe our coming world cup might be played on a synthetic surface i do not know because no report has been published however fifa has allowed a synthetic surface to be used in football then problem is psychology says no two persons are alike now if training loads are to be calculated the training load has to be separately calculated for each individual sports person football team comprises of 18 foot players but when you have to administer training loads to them every sports person's load is to be separately calculated when you separately calculate load the recovery period which brings the effect of training load on the sports person they are also to be separately calculated for each and every sports person therefore 
unless our coaches are well familiar with the recent technology with the advanced scientific developments i am sure they will find it very very difficult to groom our sports persons who can bring laurels to our country in maybe olympic games or asian games or commonwealth games or in world championships gone are the days when coach alone could solve all the problems of the sports persons today you require a team of experts no doubt coach is the most important member of the team now other experts are expert in science of sports training expert in exercise physiology expert in sports psychology expert in sports biomechanics expert in sports medicine and also expert in kin anthropometry these are the persons who are going to solve the specific problems of the sports persons if a sports person has a problem with the skill perfection he would need help of a sports biomechanist if somebody has a psychological problem maybe problem of stress and tension which is interfering with his or her performance they would need the support of sports psychologist you see when you have to identify potential sports person at the age of 5 to 12 years you will need kin anthropomis who will predict when this child at the age of 5 when this child will grow up at the age of 18 what will be his height what will be the measurements of different body parts because this science is also of great help in identifying right sports persons for different games and sports therefore you have to have a team of experts attached to different sports so that they can enable them they can make them capable of achieving optimum performance a performance which can be compared to what we say performances at international levels now look at this empirically empirically means based on experience it has been revealed that talent alone contributes to 30% performance and remaining 70% comes from scientific and systematic grooming of sports persons the popular saying catch them young and coach them right supports the above, above view you see this is what science has found out that talent alone contributes to only 30% performance the remaining 70% comes from the support of science systematic grooming of the sports persons and look at i am sure you are all well familiar with the world's top sports persons like usain bolt great swimmer michael phelp a single person who have won 28 medals in olympic games none to compare this great sports person michael phelp 23 golds three silver and two bronze medals and if you see his international achievements in swimming he has won 82 medals in swimming international competitions now what enabled him what enabled michael phelps or what enabled our great sprinter usain bolt to excel in the field of swimming and athletics it is only technology it is only technology if you look at the physiognomy of these sports persons they when they were born you see usain bolt's height was 6 feet 5 inches michael felp when he came to india for the first time i wonder whether you have seen his photograph which was published in the newspaper he stood extending 
extending his arm sideways, this is what we call arm span. And kin anthropometry says the arm span of the individual is equal to the height of the person. And if you read about Michael Phelps in the newspaper, his arm span was more than his height. Then the flexibility of the ankle, which is very, very important for swimmers. When he used to take long sitting position, he used to stretch his toes and he could touch the toes on the ground. You, you try it, you cannot do it. That kind of flexibility had, he had because the flutter kick movement of the legs. If you have arms, long levers of the arms and extended ankles, you can push greater amount of water so that you are propelled faster in the water when you swing, when you swim. See Michael Phelps, 28 medals and when a report was published that Michael Phelps consumes 12 to 14,000 calories. Please listen very carefully. When they said Michael Phelps consumes 12 to 14,000 calories the, the nutrition experts their ears how is it possible that a person eats 12,000 calories and still he has not put on weight my dear friends Michael Phelps one training session was of five and a half hours and in that five and a half hours, he used to swim 10 kilometers, 10 kilometers running and 10 kilometers swimming. There is a great difference. And then he used to spend at least two hours in the gym. He used to burn all those 12 to 14,000 calories which he used to consume. And if you see this, I don't know why this. I think, sir, you have to minimize, sir. It's okay now. Okay. Now, Stacy Dragula, the gold medalist of 2000 Olympic Games, that was the time, first time when pole vault event was added for the women. When after winning, receiving the medal, when she came out of the stadium, one of the spectator asked a question to her. Asked her, how much sport depends on pole or how much it depends on the athlete? Please listen this very carefully. A spectator asked Stacy that you have won a gold. Now your achievement does it depend upon you or it depends only on the pole which you have used? You know that the poles which are being used, they are called catapults. What do you say? Flexible poles, fiberglass poles, which is a mixture of fiberglass and carbon. Look at the answer which she gives. She says, I think it is 50-50. 50 it is my achievement. And 50% performance has, has been contributed by the pole which, you have, which I have used. Her technique which she developed, again technology helped her. And the pole which she has used, again it is a kind of technological assistance provided to a sports person. That you bend the pole, you straighten it and clear the height. If I tell you what is the world record in pole vault in men, 6.18 meters for men and women are jumping more than 5 meters. Imagine 6.18 is almost 23 feet from the ground and the length of the pole is only 16 feet. With that 16 feet pole, they are clearing a height of more than 23 feet. It is nothing but technology. 
it is technology which has been helping these sports persons now look at advancements advances in science of sports training first one is target training zone i said some time back no two sports persons are alike that means for every individual sports person the training load has to be separately calculated now how do we calculate the load how much load will bring about training effect on the sports person you look at it says target training zone i am going there are number of ways by which load can be calculated i am talking about the work done by a scandinavian sports scientist by name carvonen i am giving you carvonen formula what carvonen says if you have to calculate the training load of a person for development of endurance you need only two things you need the age of the athlete and you need the resting heart rate of the athlete now i have taken up an example the athlete whose load i am going to calculate for development of endurance his age is 20 years and the resting heart rate is 72 beats per minute so therefore we follow four steps first is mhr maximum heart rate to find out maximum heart rate of the person subtract the age of the person from 220 it is 220 is a constant value minus the age of the person from 220 you get 200 beats per minute and if i explain this this person whose age is 20 years if you give him a load of 100% intensity his heart rate will go to 200 beats per minute so the maximum heart rate of the athlete is 200 beats per minute and then with this maximum heart rate we calculate h r r heart rate reserve h r r is heart rate reserve this is the most important value which is going to help us to calculate the training load for the person so h r r is the maximum heart rate which we have calculated 200 minus the heart rate of the person 72 we get a score of 128 beats per minute now with this 128 beats we have to calculate the load for development of endurance now science says the top level athletes if they want to develop endurance the load intensity should be between 70 to 85% let me again repeat athletes who are national and international level if they want to develop their endurance the load intensity should range between 70% to 85% now let us calculate the heart rate for 70% training intensity it is 128 is our heart rate reserve multiplied by 70% that is 70 divided by 100 is 0.70 plus the heart rate of the person 72 you get a score of 161.6 because heart rate is never a fractional value so since it is fraction is more than 0.5 we take 70% training intensity as 162 beats per minute then 85% training intensity that is 128 multiplied by 80% that is 0.85 plus 72 heart rate we get a value of 180.8 and we take it as 181 so this sports person whose age is 20 years 
and resting heart rate is 72 beats per minute. His targets have been calculated for development of endurance. So long the heart rate is maintained between 162 and 181 during the training program, this person will get maximum benefit for development of endurance. And let me explain this with the help of diagram. Look at this diagram. Heart rate 72 beats per minute is on the base. Maximum heart rate is 200 beats is also shown. And the two targets which we have calculated is 162 and 181. And that is the target in which I have put a cross. There is a cross in the target. If you see here, the sports person warms up, starts the training process. He has done 20 minutes of warming up, then takes a load for 45 minutes. 20 to 65 takes a load for 45 minutes. And so long he or she maintains the heart rate between 162 to 181 beats per minute, this sports person will develop endurance to optimal level to maximum level. The sports person will be greatly benefited in terms of endurance development. Now where the problem is, our coaches are not familiar with these scientific ways of calculating the target training zones. When they are not familiar, naturally, they only apply some kind of method. Let me give a trial whether this improves the performance of the person. A trial has been given. The person has wasted energy without getting any benefit. So once you calculate such targets, there is no reason why the sports person will not receive 100% benefit from the training. So long this person's heart rate will remain between 162 beats to 181 beats per minute. He or she is going to develop endurance to an optimum level. This is how endurance targets are calculated. Look at characteristics of strength development. The targets for strength development. You know, strength is of three types. Maximum strength explosive strength and strength endurance and these intensity, density, frequency and duration are four features of the outer training load. Outer training load is load which is given to the sports person by the coach. That load should have intensity. Density is the rest period between two bouts of loads. Frequency is number of repetitions and duration is time of influence of load. So when maximum strength is to be developed, the load intensity should be between 90 to 100 percent. Between two sets of strength training, the rest should be 4 to 8 minutes. Number of repetitions, 1 to 4, because the load is of 100 percent intensity, so the duration of load will be longer because movements will take place slow, because intensity is very high, therefore the duration of load will be more. Explosive strength, intensity will be 70 to 80 percent. Again rest period 4 to 8 minutes. Number of repetitions 6 to 10. Now because intensity has reduced, therefore duration, the effect of load will remain on the individual for a short period. Strength endurance, 50 to 60 percent load, rest 2 to 4 minutes, repetitions 15 to 30 because intensity has drastically come down. The duration of effect of load will again be short. Now if you have this table with you, whether you have football players or hockey players or athletes or volleyball players or basketball players, all three types of strength can be developed. Only thing you have to know is 
which type of strength is important for the sports person whether he needs maximum explosive strength or more maximum strength or more strength endurance for example shot putter discus throwers hammer throwers weight lifters they need more maximum strength long jumpers triple jumpers volleyball players basketball players they need more explosive strength and those who them who run marathon who do distance swimming they need more of strength endurance now this table is easy to understand but to follow it it is very difficult because using this table you will see the next line in case the above characteristics of strength training are to be implemented one rm of different muscles related to the sport will have to be computed one rm for different muscles which are related to your sport you have to calculate one rm that is that weight with which only one repetition is possible that means 100% of different muscles is to be calculated what is that weight with which with which you will be able to calculate 100% intensity which will allow the person to perform only one repetition unless you find out that you will not be able to use this table once you know 100% you can calculate 70% you can calculate 80% you can calculate 50% you can calculate 60% but you have to calculate 100% ability and which is called 1 rm of the sports persons unless you calculate 1 rm this table cannot be used because with after calculating 100% you have to find out 90% 70% 80% 50% 60% so that is possible only when you find out 100% now how 100% is calculated you look here protocol for testing one repetition maximum this one repetition maximum protocol has 12 steps there are two slides six steps on this slide and six steps on the second slide now this method which i you are seeing on the slide it is called trial and error method i can tell you if you adopt this method by the time you are able to calculate one rm of two to three muscles you will get extremely tired you will get extremely tired therefore our exercise physiologists have suggested simpler ways convenient ways to calculate one rm of the sports person let me briefly explain how this method is followed the coach takes the sports person to the gym takes the sports person to the gym and with his or her own experience tells him to perform an exercise with a particular load suppose bench press i hope you know what bench press is you lie down in prone position on a bench keep a weight in front of your chest and lift it vertically up and bring it down lift it vertically up and bring it down now you have to come to a weight with which only one repetition is possible suppose you tell the person start exercise with 70 kg you start with 70 kg he or she performs 10 repetitions what he does adds 10% weight to it makes it 77 kg after again 15 20 minutes says perform bench press again suppose the person performs five repetitions so he will add 1 1 kg each time to come to a stage where only one repetition is possible second repetition cannot be performed that will become 1 rm and i can tell you by the time you repeat these 12 steps you will be extremely tired therefore in one session you will be able to calculate 1 rm 
of only about two to three muscles again you have to come the next day and perform the same thing therefore simpler procedures have been worked out let me show you if you look at this formula of computation of one repetition maximum which is given by mccardle catch and catch what he says he divides the sports persons into two categories untrained sports person and trained sports person he gives a formula if you have to calculate one rm of a untrained sports person now take 1.554 in bracket weight with which seven to ten repetitions repetitions are done that weight put in the bracket multiply by 1.554 and from that minus 5.181 you will get one rm for this untrained sports person if for a trained sports person one rm is to be calculated the formula is 1.172 bracket weight in kg for which 7 to 10 repetitions can be performed plus 7.704 this is easier to find a weight with which 7 to 10 repetitions can be performed this you can find out find out very easily so with this method you can calculate the one repetition maximum of the person and then his weight training or her weight training can be started and strength can be developed and now look at another technology how to calculate anaerobic capacity of the individual anaerobic capacity is capacity where you run with your maximum intensity whenever you run at your maximum speed that is helped by anaerobic capacity to calculate anaerobic capacity of the person the name of the test is 400 meter drop of test 400 meter drop of test what we do record 100 meter full speed time ask the person to run 100 meters and record the best time to run 100 meters give five minutes rest after five minutes make him or her run a distance of 400 meters at full speed and time is again recorded now in order to convert 400 meter time into 100 meter split time divide 400 meter time in by 4 the 100 meter split time is then subtracted from the split time giving drop of time look here example suppose a person's 100 meter time is 11 seconds give 5 minutes rest ask him or her to run 400 meters suppose time is 56 seconds divide 56 by 4 you get 14 seconds now from 14 you subtract the time for 100 meters 11 so this person's drop of time is 3 seconds this person who is able to run 100 meters in 11 seconds and 400 meters in 56 seconds his drop of time is 3 seconds so what he says the aim is always to reduce the drop of time if you reduce the drop of time to 2.9 seconds 2.8 seconds 2.5 seconds 2.3 seconds your anaerobic capacity will increase your anaerobic capacity will increase therefore our coaches have to conduct these experiments with our students you you cannot just say okay run in 50 seconds you have to calculate now this is what is technology which i am sharing with you if you do these calculations sports person will derive full benefit maximum benefit from the load which you give to a sports person now look at superset method for development of explosive strength explosive strength maximum strength strength endurance now superset method 
is one of the method which we use for development of all three types of strength maximum strength explosive strength and strength endurance now if you have heard the name of sylvester stein chairman of high training center in united kingdom and triple gold medalist of olympic games has opined that superset method will make you faster as strong as an ox bull and as powerful as a cheetah what sylvester stein has said he had three gold medals in the olympics and in his entire life he had adopted superset method he says if you use a superset method you will become as strong as a bull an ox you have seen a bull how much load the bull is able to carry and cheetah the panther this animal has maximum explosive strength he can execute a jump of 23 feet he says if you use superset method you will develop your explosive strength to the maximum extent and then one more benefit of superset method because i don't know whether you know these two technical terms agonist and antagonist if you see my upper arm if upper arm muscle is agonist the muscle at the back is antagonist if muscle in the front of the thigh is agonist then muscle at the back of thigh is antagonist now when you train in the weight training room both agonist and antagonist are to be developed together there should be a balanced development of strength in both the muscles if you develop only agonist and do not develop antagonist you are bound to get injury when you are participating in sports therefore superset method also avoids injuries at the end of usain bolt's career if you saw the last world athletics championship when usain bolt was running the relay when usain bolt was running the relay he was the anchor runner of the team and he pulled the hamstring muscle the muscle at the back of the thigh his team was leading but because of the injury in the last 15 meters they lost the gold medal in fact they could not win any medal in that world championship and reason is because imbalanced development of strength when it takes place the weaker muscle gets pulled then fourth is development of explosive strength with the help of stopwatch we go to gym for development of strength a new method has been developed where you develop your explosive strength where movements against weight are done at a high speed with the help of stopwatch only six repetitions are to be done in 4.8 seconds in 4.8 seconds six repetitions are to be performed that means each repetition is performed in 0.8 seconds if you use this method developing explosive strength with a stopwatch probably you will be able to develop your maximum strength to the maximum extent look at these two athletes at the bottom running hand shake arm action in sprint running proposed by lee evans lee evans also at one point of time broke the world record in 100 meters look at the arms of both the athletes when the arm swings forward they extend their arm forward as if they are going to shake hand with somebody look at the photographs you will be able to make out their palms are open like this when arm comes forward they stretch it forward as if they are going to shake hand with somebody look at the photograph on the left side power running 
it is kenneth powell another gold medalist of the olympic games biomechanics says when you bring your arm forward in the forward swing if you take it forward this partial momentum of the arm is added to the momentum of the body and therefore your speed becomes more your speed increases so this technique you see any sprinter you will find this technique handshake technique of running look at use of obla onset of blood lactate accumulation a new science which helps in improving the speed performance of the individual obla concept onset of blood lactate accumulation the lactate the lactic acid lactate threshold typically begins at 50 to 60% of maximum oxygen uptake in a untrained sports person and 70 to 80% in a trained sports person a second increase in the rate of lactate accumulation has been noted at higher relative intensities of exercise this second point of inflection has been termed as the onset of blood lactate accumulation look at the diagram round balls there are two balls the first one is the lactate threshold but if you each trying run at your maximum intensity up to lt then the red ball will shift forward this is what is the onset of blood lactate accumulation earlier it was taking place where lt is written and because of each time hitting lt at your maximum speed you look at the obla point has shifted forward if person is untrained and if person is trained untrained is whole line and trained person is dotted line you can see in the case of a trained person there is a slightly better advantage for him his obla has shifted still ahead of the untrained person therefore if you train at your maximum intensity and hit the obla time again and again your obla time will shift forward and your onset of blood lactate will shift forward and therefore you will not get easily tired your tiredness will be delayed you will get fatigue after a little more time and as a result your speed performance will improve look at use of isokinetic system i don't know how many of you have heard the name of isokinetic machine it is a machine which costs about 2 crores of rupees isokinetic machine it is a very costly machine and you will find this machine only in very well or highly developed sports science laboratories maybe if you go to gwalior in lnip you might find this machine you go to nis patiala you might find it but all the good surgeons who treat the bones of the individuals they all keep isokinetic machines the orthopedic surgeons all of them keep isokinetic machines because they have to after repairing the bones they also have to improve the gait pattern of the individual if the leg bone breaks when the bone heals the persons have difficulties in again starting the normal lifestyle so with the isokinetic machines they develop their gait pattern now look here biceps and brachialis the muscle of the upper arm front of the upper arm science says the biceps muscle has minimum strength least tension and strength at 120 degrees 
and if angle is 30 degrees it has least tension and when angle is 120 degrees it has maximum tension this is probably if you see from the side if I sit like this when this angle is about 30 degrees this biceps muscle has minimum strength has maximum strength I am sorry and when this angle is 30 degrees it has minimum strength so when you go to the gym to develop your biceps muscle you can take the weight of only 30 percent angle because if you take the weight of 120 degrees then from here you will not be able to lift the weight because at this angle the strength of the muscle is minimum but if you use isokinetic machine in isokinetic machine the resistance and speed of movement is fixed in the computer it is computer which helps you to perform the movement. It is computer which will help you to perform the movement. Therefore, when you have an isokinetic machine at every angle, whether it is 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 or 100 or 120, you get maximum load on the development of strength of the muscle. And that is why use of isokinetic machines is recommended. But I have told you it's a very costly machine and if in the process of usage it goes bad, our engineers cannot repair it, you will have to call the engineer from the country from where you have purchased it. And one visit of the engineer will cost you something like 15 to 20 lakhs of rupees if the machine is to be repaired. Therefore, you have to be very careful but it is a very good system which has four parts it has four parts computer is the central part and three other attachments to work on different muscles of the body a very good system for development of strength number eight time action movement to improve 100 meters performance time action movement to improve 100 meters performance now Time action period can be divided into four parts. Time action period can be divided into four parts. If you look at, this is interfering. I'll keep it here. Let me keep it here. It doesn't bother anybody. Time action period for improvement of speed performance. This time action period can be divided into five parts. Reaction speed, block clearance speed, acceleration time, speed maintenance time and finish time. Reaction time, block clearance time, acceleration time, speed maintenance time and finish time. And all the five phases are shown in the diagram. Look at this diagram. 100 meters starts with the fire of pistol the starter gives the command on your marks set fire once the fire fire a shot is fired the reaction time of the athlete how soon he reacts to the sound of the pistol the person leaves the perform the first movement of the body in set position the body of the sprinter is still no movement is permitted rule says on set command the person's body should be still as soon as the fire is made the person has to leave the block slightest movement of the sprinter the role of reaction time is finished and then the block clearance time takes over how much time a person takes to clear the blocks the best sprinter of the world have a reaction time of 0 0.13 to 0 0.17 seconds. 0 0.13 to 0 0.17 seconds. So, 
they leave the block, then they accelerate. You can see this curve. This curve you see here, the person's speed is gradually increasing. This is the acceleration phase in which the person's speed is increasing. About 25, 30 years back, sprinters used to accelerate only up to about 45 to 50 meters. Now they have increased the acceleration distance because this is the only phase where there is maximum improvement of speed of the individual. There is no other way phase except at the end where there is a very slight increase in speed. This is the phase where speed improves. Thereafter, speed is maintained. Speed maintenance time. 15 to 20 meters. The male world top athletes, male athletes maintain their speed for 20 meters. The best female sprinters maintain for 15 meters. A beginner may accelerate, come to this point and from here itself deceleration may start. His or her speed may start declining. Then he maintains for 2 meters then 8 meters, 12 meters, 15 meters and 20 meters. That is how one is able to maintain the speed. And thereafter, there is a deceleration. Speed declines. When you see a track running at the, a, when you see a track and field athlete running at the track, it looks with the naked eye that the person speed is increasing from beginning up to the time he or she finish the, finishes the race, it does not happen. Here in the acceleration phase speed is increasing. In this phase speed is maximum and here speed is declining. Because even over a distance of 100 meters, the person gets tired. Speed is a product of two things. Frequency of stride and length of the stride. Speed is a product of two things. Frequency of stride and length of the stride. Now in this phase, where the athlete gets tired, his frequency or her frequency declines. So what the sports person does in the last 10 meters, the sprinter makes the stride length more by 10 to 15 centimeters and therefore you notice in the last 10 meters there is a slight increase in the speed of the person and that is how they are able to bring about the best performance in this event. Look at, look at these split timings, 100 meter, 10 meter splits. These are all splits of Osafa, Osafa Powell and Usain Bolt. Osafa Powell ran in 2005 and Usain Bolt in 2008 in, in Beijing Olympics he ran. Look at Reaction time of Osafa Powell is 0 0.15. Reaction time of Usain Bolt is 0 0.165. This was the weakest point of Usain Bolt. His reaction time was very poor. And then you see acceleration. Speed is gradually increasing. Then here the speed is maintained. And then again if you look at the end here, 80 to 90 and last 10 meters, they increase the length of the stride and the time slightly improves and as a result of that, they are able to clock their best timing over a distance of 100 meters. Look at now, look at this number 9, muscle memory, 
मसल मेमोरी वट साइंस सेज टेक्नोलॉजी सेज ए न्यू एंड अनफेमिलियर लोड क्रिएट्स क्विक सुपर कंपनशेशन कंपनसेशन इफेक्ट वेन यू टेक ए न्यू लोड इट्स इफेक्ट ऑन द स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन इज वेरी क्विक बट इफ यू कीप ऑन परफॉर्मिंग द सेम एक्सरसाइज अगेन एंड अगेन द इफेक्ट ऑफ द एक्सरसाइज बिकम्स लेस देर फोर इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर ए स्पोर्ट्स पर्सन to keep on changing the exercise for example if strength is to be developed there are about 8 to 9 different systems speed several training methods are there endurance several training methods are there but if you keep on doing only one exercise again and again muscle memory develops and when muscle memory develops the effectiveness of the exercise changes therefore you must keep on changing the exercises and last is number 10 how to work out recovery how to work out recovery i have talked about how to calculate load now how recovery is to be worked out 70 beats per minute is the normal heart rate person takes the load heart rate increases and then at this point where i am showing the arrow the load stops then recovery begins is written here phase of recovery we divide phase of recovery into three equal parts 1 by 3 1 by 3 and 1 by 3 during this heart rate again starts declining now if you are developing endurance please listen very carefully if you want to develop endurance then at this point where i am showing arrow it shows where heart rate from 170 180 comes down to between 110 to 120 if endurance is to be developed second load should be given when heart rate is 110 to 120 if you want to develop endurance and if you want to develop speed then second load should be given when your heart rate has once again come back to the same level that is 70 beats per minute where you started you will develop your speed and your endurance to maximum level if you calculate the recovery between two loads and provide a calculated recovery period that is why this first phase one third is called profitable rest period which gives maximum benefit when endurance is to be developed and when you give a second load at the end of third one recovery phase you develop your speed to a maximum level develop your speed to a maximum level and this is what i wanted to share with you my dear ladies and gentlemen thank you very much for your patient hearing i hope i was not too fast but i had a limited time where i had to complete my lecture i have taken about an hour or so and if you have any question i will be too glad to answer dr john yes sir if anybody yes, sir. has a question yes sir yes sir i will be too pleased to answer their questions you can let their questions made known to me yes sir yes sir thank you so, uh, thank you so much sir for the wonderful session uh, sir uh, i hope the participant had uh, benefited the from this uh, presentation so now i request uh, participants uh, for the uh, questions okay uh, that question and answer session please ra raise your query to our expert to the resource person please or they can tell you you can tell me no problem yes yeah you can raise your hand otherwise you can text so that i will uh, i will i will allow you to talk yeah some questions are there sir can i read sir sure yes uh yes good evening sir how we can develop the speed endurance like uh, 400 uh, 4800 meter 3000 
3200 meter no no again i think there is some mistake what what is written there uh how we can double speed endurance yeah like for uh, for 8 for 800 meter and 800 meter is not there is no event yes uh, gautam gautam is there gautam kumar gautam can you can speak if you want there is no event as 4800 yes. meters yes gautam you can unmute yourself maybe he wants to develop for 400 and 800 meters this must be two events yes yes sir maybe 400 yeah 400 yes. and 800 meters yeah uh, sir uh, please uh, sir hello sir please kindly uh, if you stop uh, the sharing sir okay okay yes, okay sir, okay yes, okay yes go uh, gautam sir please go ahead uh good evening sir yeah good evening uh sir there are some student uh, i cannot hear we went to this sir recruitment process i processes. cannot hear uh, uh, i cannot so recruitment is going on for this sir gautam can you write it down hello sir yes sir ah uh, please write because there is so much of uh, echo what you speak cannot be under i cannot understand yes sir yes sir okay sir okay sir yes is strength training applicable for 16 to 18 years boys no problem strength training is applicable to every individual but with barbells strength training is not started below the age of 13 years i hope you understand what i am talking with barbells you what when you go into the gym you have rods and plates attached to them these are called barbells we do not recommend strength development below the age of 13 years with the help of barbells but you can do against your own body weight against the weight of the partner station exercises can be done and when you start at the age of 13 the intensity will be only 20 to 50% 14 increase it by 10% 15 again increase it by 10% it takes 6 years to perform exercise with 100% weight there is no problem but okay. if you develop okay strength before the age of 13 using barbells you know we have in our joints epiphyseal plates which are in simple words called growth plates if you use this training with barbells at a young age then the epiphyseal plates get damaged and the growth of the child is obstructed his growth will not take place properly otherwise from 13 years you can start with barbells but not more than 30 to 50% weight to be given and it takes 6 years by the time the person starts working with 100% intensity strength training can can be given children can develop strength training against their own body weight you do push ups against your own body weight there is no problem but against barbells not below the age of 13 years i hope kumar your question is answered okay thank you sir right right yes yes anybody thank else you, there was one lady sian lal chand uh, something like she appeared and again disappeared <laughs> whether she wanted to ask a question i don't know no uh, no uh, no sir actually she is going to have a board of things sir <laughs> okay 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 i'm sorry uh, yeah. i thought she has a question yes, kindly sir. share ppt sir okay <laughs> <laughs> no uh, problem you you anybody you can write down my mail id please write down d r A K U double P A L at Radif Mail R E D I double F M A I L dot com. Anybody who wants my PPT, please send your mail ID to me. I will send you the PPT. No problem. Or my mail ID is available with Dr. John. You can take my mail ID from him. I assure you that you will receive my. 
made my ppt oh uh, sir one more question is there uh, please yeah question is uh, yes uh if we adopt any training for the periods of 12 week how many week once we have to change the intensity and how much we can increase okay okay it's a good question you see this question deals with adaptation period adaptation period means when you start training this you start with any load it takes 10 to 20 days for complete effect of that load to come on the individual it takes 10 to 20 days for a person to get the complete effect of that load you train first day maybe some effect you get second day it increases third day it again increases this is called adaptation period which is of 10 to 20 days a beginner a new sports person he will get the effect in 10 11 12 days intermediate level athlete will get the effect in 14 15 days and highly trained athlete will get the effect in 18 19 20 days therefore complete effect of the load comes on the individual between 10 to 20 days depending upon the training state of the individual or i can do one thing uh dr lama yes sir i can send you the ppt sure sir you sir, can sure. share with them i have no objection sure sir sure, the sure. knowledge is always meant to be shared with everybody thank you sir thank you knowledge sir. is meant to be shared i would like my those of them who are attending the lecture also teach teach these things to their students wherever they are working yes sir uh any question their main question was to get the ppt so they will get the ppt <laughs> don't worry Okay, okay, sir. I will send you my PPT. No problem. Yes, sir. In the chat box, sir, we have so many, sir. Uh, thanks. <laughs> no problem. It's yes, a sir. pleasure. Yes, sir. yes, sir. So many. I thanks, have sir. my mail ID is available with Dr. Lama. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can take my mail ID from him. Any yes, query, any question, any time you can ask me. Okay, It sir. It will be a pleasure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you right, so much, right, sir. Again, right, once again. Right, right. So now. Yes. Now, uh, now with us we have we have Miss Sian, uh, Assistant Professor, uh, Department of Education, Mizoram University. I like uh, I like to invite her to propose the word of thanks, ma'am. Please, Sian, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor, respected head, Department of Education, esteemed speaker, dear colleagues and attendees. I am greatly honored to have this privilege to propose a word of thanks and express my gratitude to all those who made today's program a success. So on behalf of the organizing committee I would like to thank our honorable vice chancellor for granting us per permission to organize today's webinar. Thank you sir. Also I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our our head Department of Education who is also the convener for this program for always extending her moral support and encouragement it would have been impossible to organize the webinar without her support i greatly appreciate our resource person professor ak upal for accepting our invitation to speak on this event amidst his busy schedule thank you very much sir for sharing your valuable time and expertise with us thank your you talk has much. indeed enlightened us in understanding the importance and the role of scientific and technological advancements in sports training thank you very much sir i also thank my colleagues from the department and the supporting staff for their cooperation and readily extending a helping hand whenever it was required and sincere thanks goes to all the attendees uh, for spending their valuable time with us today we hope that you have benefited from this webinar and i extend my heartfelt gratitude once again to all of you for making this event successful 
Last but not the least, I would also like to thank all those who are involved in coordinating today's webinar, especially the technical personnel from ICT department for their tremendous support that has been of great help. Once again, thank you all for making today's program a success. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Thank you very much. Uh, yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you, ma'am, uh, for, the, the, for delivering the vote of thanks. Uh, so, conclude the webinar. Once again, I thank all the participants for the attending the webinar. I hope you all enjoy the session. So, regarding feedback, uh, I think uh, we have already activated. Maybe within uh, 24 hours, you will get in your email. And regarding uh, webinar certificate, it will be sent to your registered email ID. So, now I'm ending the session from my side. Thank you. Jai Hind. Thank you very much. Jai. Yes. Thank you very much.